Hey class, let's start talking about takeoffs and how to start taking our drawings and turn them into things that we can put into our estimate through a work breakdown structure and quantities, uh, linear dimensions and areas to give us materials and costing for those sections in our estimate sheet. So let's start this little example with the first page, which is going to be my site plan. Now, as a refresher, a drawing only shows you what the project looks like when it's complete. And our job as a general contractor and a builder is to take the set of drawings and break it down into its component parts so we can actually apply materials, labor, and when needed, a subtrade cost for helping us complete that scope of work or activity. So when I look at a site plan, yes, it's informative. It gives us the uh, width of a lot, the length of a lot. In this case, shows us the existing site plan condition and proposed site plan condition and where my two-story laneway suite, this is what we're building, is located. So that's all pretty crucial. So it seems kind of topical, you know? This is where it is, this is how big it is, but the site plan contains a lot of what I call, you know, hidden activities that are not defined that you need to capture labor for. So what I would start to do is I get some pens out. So I like to use green for sc scope, you know, inclusion that isn't referred to in the final structure. So what do you have to do to make that drawing come to life? So in this case, let's look at the existing plan. For us to be able to build a structure, it means that we have an existing garage and slab to remove. So I can simply take that area and highlight it. To say that these two areas on my plan, they have to be removed by me. So I'm gonna highlight those. So when I get to my section on site prep or removal in this case, I can do that. So I wanna read all my notes existing concrete driveway to be removed, right? That is me because I am the contract for this project. Existing fence to be removed and disposed, that's also me. So I'm gonna write that under my removal scope. Existing trees to be removed by client. So the client's gonna do something. I might just circle that in my client in question color to say that is by client. So when I get to that piece of my scope for removal, I don't have to carry any costing or hours for that. Now, crucial for Toronto and things like TPZ, so tree protection zone, is that I have to build those. So that is gonna be under my scope for site setup. So I can highlight those, so I need to do that. I've got two trees here, I need to do that. And I'll read all these notes. So read every single thing and hide the things that are relevant to you. So let me do that while you Watch me break down this plan, make my notes, and we'll finish things up here. Perfect. So there we go. So what I've done is I've covered the existing site plan, the proposed site plan, everything that we have to do as a contractor, manager to ourselves, really perform, is been highlighted in green. And in red, I've just indicated which construction category these activities fall into. So the removal of the existing garage is in deconstruction. The removal of the existing Bell Telecom pole will be in utilities. Um, the construction of the TPZ will be in site plan, etc. As we get to the proposed site plan, I've also made some notes. So I have to excavate my trenching to get my services back to Langway Suite, and that is an under excavation. I'm constructing a new set of stairs up to the existing house, that's under decks. I have to rebuild the section of the fence here, and that's under fencing. I have to rebuild a fence on this other property, also under fencing. So by highlighting and indicating which category, when I go through my estimate sheet, I can just simply go through, and as I write it in my sheet with the area, I can check it off to make sure that I've covered everything on this plan. So that's the beginning of how we start to use highlighters and really how we should track what we call almost you know, unlisted activities because they're not related to the building of the main structure, but we have to do them. So we have to include cost and time to break those down. So if I wanna uh, continue that and figure out, well, how much new fencing do I need? You know, we start getting into doing takeoffs. So what I wanna do is I wanna grab a scale. So this case is my imperial scale. I look at my, my scale as uh, one quarter inch equals one foot. I can grab my scale, I can flip to one quarter equals one foot. 
And then I can put this down. I'm beginning of the new fencing, so I'm zero. I measure across and I get 33 feet. So anytime I record an information like a measurement, I don't want to do it twice. So I grab my pen, it's 33 feet. I can mark 33 feet. I write it perpendicular, sort of parallel to the line so I know what I've dimensioned. If I want to measure on this side, again, it goes from looks like this point until this point. I mark on the zero, I come across, and I get uh, 33 feet. So same, same dimension, so 33. So when I get to fencing, I'll check this note off. I'll refer and say, okay, I need 66 linear feet of new fencing, and that'll break down for materials. So I'll go around my entire property, look at what are my takeoffs for even things like soft landscaping. Soft landscaping, we buy things like sod and prep for that backyard, is going to be area. So I want to figure out, you know, what does my new grass need from here until the edge of this uh, new covered deck? So again, grab my scale, and it's still quarter inch equals a foot. Put my zero mark, and I'm going to get, that looks like uh, 28, 29, looks like 29 and a half. So I'll just make a note here. I've got 29 foot six. And my width is going to be 0 to 12, 13, 13 foot 9. So 13 foot 9 is my area. So grab my handy dandy calculator, which again is going to be my phone. I'm going to take 29 foot 6, so 29.5 times 13 foot 9, which is 13.75. It gives me an area of 405.62, which we're going to round to 406. So I want to remember what I took off the area from, to what extent. And what I do is a simple tip, is I leave all my notes on the page. So I'm going to grab my triangle. I'm going to mark the point that I started to that corner, this corner, and this corner. And I'm simply going to draw a box, because it reminds me what I did an area for. So I come across, go to the opposite corners, come across. And in the center, where the two lines overlap, I'm going to write, so I said 405.62 is my area. I'm going to write 4, oh, I'm going to round up to 406, so 406, and I do a square with a line, which is 406 square feet. So I'm referring to the new sod I need, which is under landscaping. Right below it, I've already done myself the favor and written 406 square feet. So when I get to that category and estimate, I have the area. When I'm looking at my fencing, I've reminded myself, and I've written 33 on this side, 33 on this side. So I'm doing those takeoffs later. Always leave your dimensions, your notes on the page if you're breaking out a set of plans physically. It will help you out, and I never have to grab my scale again and measure it when I get to inputting it in my estimate sheet. So that's how we kick off looking at a site plan for activities, and next video, we'll get into framing.